So in today's video, we're going to be revisiting an old concept for a video I did years ago, which was fixing the color grade in Marvel movies. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because I thought it would be fun, just because out of the blue, that video just popped off out of nowhere, and I thought, why not do a follow-up? Because the people are asking for it, why not give it to them? And so today, I'm going to be revisiting a couple of clips I did in the past, but then also I'm going to do some new stuff, because yeah, the Marvel grey flat look has continued throughout the years, it's still continuing to this day. Also, I did realise when colour grading some of the clips that some of the clips are just really unsalvageable, purely for the fact that a lot of them have dodgy CGI compositing. A lot of the clips are made in the computer, and so overall they just don't look very nice. Also, disclaimer, I'm not a professional colour grader, I'm a filmmaker and I colour grade my own films, but I would not call myself a professional colourist. I'm just a filmmaker with a passion and a dream that just wants to have some fun in post-production. I'm also editing and colouring the stuff in DaVinci Resolve Studio, so I have all the fancy plugins like Blooming and Halation, and it's all great. I do also want to emphasise that the clips I'm using are not the raw image files, I don't have access to that. The overall quality of the clips are pretty shoddy, I just screen recorded this stuff off YouTube. I don't have access to the raw files, so there will be a lot of breaking of the images, there'll be a lot of noise and such. That's stuff I can't really deal with, I'm afraid. Also, I do want to address a couple of things I said in the previous video. Back then I said I don't use LUTs. First of all, shut up, okay? You can use LUTs. LUTs, in many ways, are really good at achieving a certain look for a film. I'm not saying that you need to depend entirely on LUTs. I only use a 35mm Kodak LUT to get the film look. But it's only just so I can get the filmic look, that's literally it. I also use the Color Space Transform tool just so I can get the appropriate gamma for the clips. In this one, I'm pretty sure all the Marvel films shoot on the Arri Alexa, so I use the Arri Alexa one. It's not entirely accurate, but even still, it helps add a certain colour to the image. And yeah, I think that's everything that I need to address before getting into all this. So, the first clip we're gonna do is the clip I did from Thor Ragnarok. I've made it look so much better, I'm just going to be honest, because one of the biggest lies that everyone says about Thor Ragnarok, aside from the fact that it's really good, I mean, it, I don't think it's that good, I don't even think it's that funny. One of the biggest lies of Thor Ragnarok is the fact that everyone says, wow, it's so vibrant, it's so colourful, the images really pop off the screen. No, they don't. You look at this clip on Asgard, and it's so flat, and grey, and boring looking, I don't know what people are smoking, because this is not colourful. You add in the contrast and the shadows, and you deepen those blacks, and yeah, now I can see what people would be saying. Yeah, this is bright and colourful and pops. It's just funny, because you go back to the very first Kenneth Branagh Thor film, and like, that film is shot on film. It looks stunning, it's gorgeous. And then you get to Thor Ragnarok, and... I don't know what happened to Asgard, but like, it just looks really flat and boring. But the thing is, it can't even be a fact of, oh, it's because the first Thor was shot on film and then this was shot digitally. No, because Thor The Dark World was shot on digital and Thor The Dark World looked really good. And then going to another clip I did before, which was the airport scene in Civil War. I mean, I did the best I could to give it a certain look and a feel because the original clip is just quite bland. It doesn't look like the film has very much personality. So yeah, deep in the shadows, deep in the blacks, add in contrast, and now it feels a bit more like an espionage thriller. But then again, I think one of the biggest problems of this scene is the way it's shot. It just doesn't look very aesthetic. Some of it has to do with the location, some of it has to do with a lot of the compositing. Like, the gap between Black Widow and Spider-Man is so weird. Not to mention the fact, like, the height difference between Black Widow and Spider-Man is so weird because, like, Tom Holland is, what, like, 5'8", five, 5'7"? And Tagala Johansson's, like, 5'3", and she's wearing, like, heels or something, but they're not, like, that big. She's maybe wearing, like, 2-inch heels at the most, and... That makes her 5'5". Five five. That, that, her height difference between Tom Holland doesn't make any sense. I don't know, now I can actually see the difference between the real life photography. Like, Team Cap, that's all real. And then you get to Team Iron Man, and so much of it is like green screen, compositing, VFX stuff, and you're like, whoa. That's, it's jarring. See, this is the sad thing about becoming a filmmaker. It's the fact that you can't enjoy films a lot of the time because you know how they're made, or at least, like, you're trying to figure out how they're being made, and so it's kind of like a curse. Like, to the regular person, they're watching this and like, yeah, it looks fine. But to a filmmaker, you're just like, no, this, ah, oh, this, everything is all wrong. Okay, going on to a new clip, we are going to Captain Marvel a film that I think is incredibly dull and incredibly boring, and that's something that the cinematography and the colour grading in that film reflects, because it's so flat. Why is it so dull? I'm feeling nothing from this because the colouring is just telling me, wow, look at how grey and bland our movie looks. So again, you add in, like, the film lot, and then you deepen the shadows, and you add some contrast, and now it looks like a spy thriller you would see in, like, the mid-2000s. Like, you go back, like, 20 years ago, 
films used to look like this. There used to be such a contrast between the blacks and the whites, and there was a nice gradation between everything. Everything looks cinematic. Heck, even comedies back in the early 2000s look more cinematic than most films do today. The next clip is the battle between Iron Man and Thanos in... Vormir? Something like Titan. One, I don't remember. But anyway, it's the fight between Iron Man and Thanos in Infinity War. And mainly you got to do with this one is just, you know, add in the film emulation, blah, blah, blah. But then also you deepen the blacks and the shadows and all of a sudden you make things just pop a lot more. And just by doing that, the image becomes so much more striking. You're like, whoa, okay, this is like a shot from a film. The next clip is from Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is probably one of the biggest offenders of a film that looks like, yeah, if they shot everything on the Ari Alexa, they edited the film and they like forgot to color grade it. Because it's just so flat and bland and boring. And I, if I remember correctly, this is shot by Bill Pope. Like, Bill Pope, when he shoots Marvel films, changes his name from Bill Pope to William Pope. And if you don't know who Bill Pope is, he's a famous cinematographer that shot things like The Matrix and Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3. Those films are gorgeous. And you look at his stuff in the MCU, like Shang-Chi and the Ant-Man films, they don't look that good. And now getting to the stuff from Spider-Man No Way Home. A lot of the stuff with Doc Ock and Spider-Man on the highway doesn't look great, purely because it's mostly done in the computer, and it's just a bunch of CGI, and overall the compositing is fine, but like the overall CGI work is not as crisp. Not to mention the time of day they shot it at, they shot it like at midday, or at least they set the scene at midday, and it just looks really like ugly. Like, if you ever shoot outside, you don't want to shoot at midday because it's one of the most ugly times of day. All the shadows are unflattering. It's so bright. There's a real sharp delineation between your blacks and your whites and like your shadows and your like midtones and highlights. It's not very flattering. You're just surrounded by a bunch of hard light and it's not flattering to look at. And so when you get to the stuff in No Way Home that it's set on the highway, it doesn't look good. This scene with Spider-Man and Doctor Strange is better because it's not set in midday, but even still, just putting in my my film ick look, it makes it so much better. Like you just deepen the shadows and the blacks, and the image just pops more. Funny actually, because speaking of Doctor Strange, I think Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is actually a really good looking film, and I think a lot of that has to do with Sam Raimi. Because you watch the film, and yes, it's shot digitally, but you look at it, and you can just tell there is like a personality in the color grading. It looks really filmic. It looks really cinematic. You can feel the old school Sam Raimi isms in the film itself. It has personality and. I just find it funny how the overall film looks really nice and then you get to the post credit scenes and it just goes back to the same flat, bland looking Marvel look. And I think the biggest defender of the grey, bland looking Marvel film is Eternals. Now, the thing with Eternals is that it is technically a stylistic choice because you watch Chloe Zhao's other film, Nomadland, it looks like Eternals. It's really grey and really flat looking. And again, you just, you know, add in contrast and you deepen the shadows and you like give it proper colours. It looks striking, the image looks quite nice, but the original image is just so flat and boring. And then the last clip we're gonna do is all the stuff from Deadpool and Wolverine in the void. Because if you've been on Twitter, you'll know that everyone like complains about this like all the time on like a daily basis. Like I think Deadpool and Wolverine looks perfectly fine, but yeah, you could make the void look a bit, you know, more nicer. I do find it funny how X-Men Origins Wolverine is considered to be one of the worst X-Men films. And in terms of visual effects, it's also one of the worst looking X-Men films. But at the same time too, from a cinematography point of view it looks really nice because they shot it on film but yeah you deepen the shadows you add in the film emulation and all that kind of stuff and the void looks like you know it looks like it's got some personality like you can see that they've done a lot of things in camera to try and give the void a distinct look but the color grading is not doing it justice like you can see the distortion of the lens the setting of the void the actual real life location looks great like it's so good and yes you could argue that the gray flat look of the void is purposeful it's trying to make the void look like it has no personality i get that and you can do that but at the same time too you look at the image and you just go but you can add a personality to it, like, it, it makes sense. Like, the lens choice and the location is really doing justice to selling the idea of the abnormality of the void. Like, you don't have to make it look flat and grey in post. I don't know, it's a choice I'm against, but I'm also not like, oh my god, this sucks, I can't believe they did that. But yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna leave this video for today. Like, again, I'm not a professional colorist, I was just messing about having fun in post-production. The main takeaway from Marvel's color grading is that all they have to do is deepen their blacks, deepen their shadows, add in a bit more of a film look, and boom, the movies look so much more better. Like one of the points Patrick H. Willems brings up in his Marvel color grading video is the fact that comic books are very contrasty, they're very vibrant, and they're very punchy. The blacks in the comic books 
are black. The inks are very deep black. And in many ways, if the films are trying to emulate the look and feel of comic books, they need to go back to this style. But the thing is too, is that like this style of color grading was like the norm in the early 2000s. You watch like Michael Bay's Transformers or like the early Fast and the Furious films. They all looked like this. Like, you watch X-Men Origins Wolverine, you go back to the photography, it looks really good. You watch the Wolverine, it looks amazing. I don't know what happened to cinema, man. Maybe it's a dying form, who knows. But then again, there's still some people out there that are saving cinema. They need one of me. Mwah. Did you want to cinema? Hey. But again, this is all just my opinion. Maybe you guys like the way the films look. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And also, let me know what you guys think of my new color grade for the films. Do you like them? Do you dislike them? Is there anything that I could have done to improve on them? Let me know in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, Follow me on social media, it's all down in the description. And until we meet again, see you guys next time.